What's up, YouTube? I'm back. I am in a hotel room. I'm not at the beach anymore. I'm done surfing. I've got my scrapes. I've got my bruises. And today I'm going to answer a question that I think some people might still be asking themselves. And that is, how can I be a digital nomad? Okay, not me personally, but how can you be a digital nomad? Uh, you want to travel, you want to see the world, you want to be in different countries all the time like I seem to be. I'm not, but I, I do travel quite a bit. I've been, I've been a lot of places and I'm very fortunate and very blessed. Well, okay, let's jump right into it. Number one, if you're watching this and you live in, in the United States of America, you have absolutely no excuse not to be traveling. The rest of the world is incredibly cheap to go to save for Europe and Australia and traveling there, you might actually save money over staying in America. So go out, get your passport, save up some money and then go to Mexico or Thailand or Bali, Indonesia or any other place in the world where you can have a nice comfortable lifestyle with fast internet and be able to to live for less than a thousand dollars a month so that's your your step one number one to know the rest of the world is actually a lot cheaper and really when you think about travel what expenses are involved most of the time the people people think about how much expenses are involved and they think about uh, the cost of a plane sure that's kind of expensive but not really I can fly round trip to Thailand from Chicago for 550 bucks. So what does it really cost? If I'm there for a month and a half, I save all kinds of money over not being in America. So that's what I'm about to do. Video updates coming soon. <laughs> so what do you do? What do you do to be a digital nomad? And do you want to be a digital nomad? Why do you want to be a digital nomad? There's a lot of questions to be asked and answered here. And this video is not going to go into all of them. I'm just going to go over kind of a, a quick kind of uh, idea about what the lifestyle might be like, what you could start doing to start working your way towards being a digital nomad and how that might affect your life. And if it's, if it's for you even. So of course it's not for everyone. That's one thing to, to take in mind. If you're somebody who likes staying at home, then sure, fine, stay at home. Don't go travel. But if you're somebody who sits and watches other people's Instagrams and YouTubes and goes, oh man, I wish I could go to Bali or Thailand or Mexico, be on the beach, blah, blah, blah. Do it. <laughs> okay, so again, if you're, if you're in the United States of America, if you're in England, uh, I think the people in England already have, don't have this problem. But if you're in the, the US, uh, and you think that you don't have money, you need to analyze your spending habits, figure out where you're spending all your money, cut that out and start saving some money. Invest if you can and invest into something that's going to give you some kind of passive income. Uh, learn about how, how to properly invest because you don't want to be 65 and have absolutely no retirement fund because you spent all your money the entire time that you were young. All right. So you start a business, you can start freelancing something online. But for me, what I do is very simple. All I need is a college degree and a certification that you can get online in hours uh, called the TEFL. And uh, it costs like 20 bucks to get a TEFL. And you can start teaching English to Chinese people through many, many different programs. And when you do that, you can make 15, 20 bucks an hour, maybe more, maybe a little bit less depending on where you're working and what your qualifications are and where you're from. But if you do that, you can work from just about anywhere. Now you do need to have a good internet connection. It needs to be something like 10, 15 megabytes per second. So not everywhere is gonna work. Where I just was in the, uh, on the beach, I couldn't teach because I was only getting three megabytes down and half a megabyte up. So, <laughs> You know, I couldn't teach while I was there, but there are other things I could do to be working on it. So what are the other things that you could be doing? Well, you could be working on uh, as a graphic designer. If you're a graphic designer and you can uh, have the ability to get clients and, uh, you know, find find work and be able to prov provide work from them, 
for them just from your computer and then be able to upload it. You don't even really need that fast internet to, to be able to do that. You could do video. If you are a videographer, if you're an editor, if you're uh, uh, into, uh, into effects or any of those kinds of things, you could do that and make a lot of, a lot of money doing that. You could do marketing uh, like through ClickFunnels, which is something I'm, I'm into, affiliate marketing and, mar and marketing in general. I have an agency, run Facebook ads. There are just a ton of things. And if you go and do a YouTube search right now in the, the search bar above, I'm sure you could find you know 25 different ways to be a digital nomad right now. But let's get the, the roadblocks out of your head. You can be a digital nomad. If, if you are in the United States of America or any place where you're making a, a decent amount of money, you can go be a digital nomad. The, the barrier to, to go travel has never been lower, ever. It's so, so simple. So go out there and get your passport, find a flight somewhere, and just go. Just like stop waiting, just, just go do it. Maybe the first time doesn't have to be for a long time. Go for seven or ten days and, and go explore a different place. I recommend Guadalajara, Mexico. It's amazing. Super metropolitan and cute. Ignore whatever the uh, Department of State is telling you about it being dangerous. It's not, in my experience. Uh, or go to Thailand. It's half the world away. It's a really long flight, but it's really cool. Okay, so the other thing you need to know is a lot of people who become digital nomads. One way that they cut out expenses is they cut out rent. Okay, just this is something you can do. Save up money for six, eight months or whatever until the end of your lease. And how much money do you need if you don't have a lease? How much, how much do you have, how much loans and whatnot do you have that you have to pay off in America? If you can eliminate all the money that you have to spend in America, and the only money that you're spending is the money you're spending on the road, then you can go travel almost indefinitely because you can work from the road. You can work in hostels, you can work in bars, you can work in restaurants in different kind of locations. All you have to do is have the people skills to be able to go and find those jobs. And you could go travel indefinitely. You could go find some place that you love and actually go live there. And that's something that I highly recommend. It is incredibly worthwhile to go travel Find a place you love and just be there. I've, I've done it a few times now and I'm, I'm very happy to be back in Guadalajara. This is one place I love. I'm very happy to be going back to Thailand soon. It's another place that I really just love to be. And I, you know, I can't wait to, to keep traveling and see all these other places. It's hard to leave some places and go someplace else because you love being in one place so much, but you also want to love being in other places and want to be there as well. It, it'll be rough to, to leave for the first time or, and uh, you know, it, it's tough to uh, quit your job even if you hate it sometimes. But uh, if, you, if you make that move, I guarantee you it'll be one of the most rewarding things that you do in your life. So go out there. Figure out some kind of skill that you can do online to, to get yourself mobile, whether you're earning $500, $1,000, $2,000 a month, whatever. Start working your buns off for the next six months or, or, or a year or whatever, or maybe it only takes four months. Maybe you have some savings. Save up some money. Figure out a way to get rid of all your, all your bills and whatnot. Get rid of a bunch of possessions because you don't need all that crap. Watch the documentary Minimalism on Netflix if you can. And get rid of it. Get yourself down to a small bag of stuff and pick that thing up and go somewhere. That's how you become a digital nomad. You just go and travel. So I can't encourage this enough. I really hope that this message hits home with one person or helps somebody to actually get the nerve up to go and actually travel and see what life is all about outside of your comfort zone. Because I guarantee you when you do, the perspective shift that you're gonna have when that happens, it's just gonna, just, it, it's gonna completely blow your mind. So I can't wait for you to share with me 
what you think of that. Uh, let me know what you think about this video. I want to know how I can help you to become a digital nomad if that's something that you're interested in. And if you have any questions for me, feel free to drop them below in the comments because I'll answer all, all of those, every single one. I guarantee it. Okay. See you all later. Thank you for watching. Bless you. Have a great day and see you next time. Peace.